Amen. Please sit. Uh, let me welcome each and every one of us to church this morning and to pray that this service will be rewarding to each and every one of us in Jesus' name. We are still on the subject of restoration. And I need to say that the restoration promised by God is a holistic one. It covers every aspect of our life. And when I talk about that, I want us to look from the perspective of man being a tripartite person, tripartite being, having the soul, the spirit, and the body. The spirit is the God-conscious part of us, and the, the soul is the self-conscious part, while the body is the word-conscious part of us. And that is why the theme that we have been looking at, restoring wasted years, has been addressing these three aspects of our being. We have looked at our relationship with God. Finances, and last week we looked at the bodily health. Today, we are going to conclude by looking at our interpersonal relationship, restoring wasted years in interpersonal relationship. And I want to pick my text from this gospel that has just been read. Matthew chapter 5, verses 23 and 24. Therefore, if you are offering your gift at the altar, and there remember that your brother or sister ask something against you. Leave your gift there in front of the altar. First, go and be reconciled to them. Then come and offer your gift. Restoring wasted years in interpersonal relationship. As an entry, I want us to know that one of the many provisions made by God to make our existence on earth enjoyable is relationship. He created us relational beings. It is not good for man to be alone. It is not he in relationships. And when we are talking about relationship, we're talking about the social connection, association, and bonds that we have with one another. As a divine gift, relationship posit positively impact our lives and these greatly. Those relationships help us meet our emotional and physical needs. They provide us essential support in challenging times by creating reliable network we can turn to for help. I know all of you can relate with what I'm saying. Where I came from, there's one prayer we pray that you will not be alone in life. The Jeshas, we say, Oni ni kanshaye you will not be alone in life. The consciousness that we are not alone is an impetus for our survivor. When you are alone in challenging times, you are done for. He created us to be in relationships. And that is why one of our hymn writers, Foliot Pierpoint, in our evergreen hymn for the beauty of the earth, he celebrates the gift of relationships. If you look at this hymn in stanza one, for the beauty of the earth, for the beauty of the skies, for the love which from our birth over and around us lies, Lord of all, to thee we raise. These are sacrifice of praise. 
if you now move on to stanza three, it talks about the joy of human love. Brother, sister, parent, child, friends on earth, friends above, pleasures pure and undefiled. Lord of all, to thee we raise. These are sacrifice of praise. If you look at it closely, you will agree with me that the benefits of interpersonal relationships are truly invaluable. Truly invaluable. But there is this problem that we have. We have an enemy. He doesn't want anything good for mankind. I'm talking about the devil. He attacks areas of our lives that brings us joy, peace, and fulfillment because his mission is to destroy, to kill. That is what we have in John 10.10. He does not spare our interpersonal relationships. He sows discord amongst us through the low cost of jealousy, pride, hatred, resentment, selfishness, inordinate ambition, and all other individualistic tendencies. Like the swarming locust in Joel chapter 2, they devour our relationships, tearing them apart, shredding them into pieces, and as a result, our homes are suffering. The church is suffering. Business entities are suffering. The community is at the brink because our interpersonal relationships have been battered. If you look around us, the, spect the spectacle gives the vibes of things fall apart. The center cannot hold. As the cohesion of our social bonds helps away, in Nigeria now there is no love lost among tribes. Even among the Yorubas, you see, see some people saying, we are Ijebu, we are Ijesha, we are Oyo, we are that. And we are splintered. You see husbands and wives. Uh, I now hear people talk about toxic relationships. They say, don't stay in that toxic relationship. Oh. You see parents and children at the loggerheads. They don't see eye to eye. Friends, business partners, church members, all are in a war of acrimony. You are, we are undoing ourselves. We want to play this one out. We go. And so he wants us to revisit our relationship. To reassess their health and wholesomeness. In our text, our Lord Jesus Christ places emphasis on the importance of reconciliation and right relationship with others before approaching God in worship or offering sacrifices. When we know that we are having issues with our brothers and sisters. We are having an axe to grind with them, reaching out to them for reconciliation. And if I want to look at this injunction of our Lord Jesus Christ, what he's saying is that having cordial relationships amongst us is higher, you no, know, is on that I pedesta, I a pedesta than coming to dance when you have a hatred in your heart, when you are hungry. And it is funny. I look at it. 
we come into this sanctuary to receive communion, drinking from the same cup. And there is hatred. God is animosity amongst us. God wants us to revisit that. Maybe I should emphasize more on the teaching of our Lord Jesus Christ. Worship and relationships are interconnected, and I will prove it. As you have come today, you want to offer your worship unto God. The God whom you have come to worship is the author of relationships. To worship God in an acceptable way, we must be in his will for relationships. You don't even acceptable. Now lie. You can't be brothers and you have lawsuit and you come to worship in the same church and you say your worship will be acceptable. You deceive yourself. That is not the will of God for relationship. Maybe I should read from 1 John chapter 4 20. If anyone says, I love God and hates his brother, he's a liar. For he who does not love his brother, whom he has seen cannot love God whom he has not seen. And that is why God is happy on it. Restore your another relationship. Then come and worship me. Another point that I can bring out from what our Lord Jesus Christ is saying is that genuine worship requires a pure an undefined heart. The psalmist says, Who may ascend the mountain of the Lord? Who may stand in his holy place? The one who has clean hands and a pure heart. If you have anger in your heart, your heart is not pure. If you are holding on to someone, you are keeping malice with someone, your heart is not heart loaded with anger. Resentment or broken relationship cannot worship God. Reconciliation positions us for acceptable worship and peace with the Lord. The third point. Addressing conflict. This is coming to us directly because we are believers. We are believers. We have tasted of the goodness of the Lord. Addressing conflict should be a pr priority as children of God. We must be willing to, because we have tasted of God's love, and so the honor lies on us to extend the same. And I will bring us into the story of Jacob's uh, reconciliation with his brother Esau. It's a popular story. With the help of their mother, Jacob robbed Esau of his birthright. And after he jackpot, he made money and decided to come back. He knew that he was coming for trouble. And he quickly addressed the unresolved. You see the way he prepared so, like J Jacob, we must take responsibility and address any unresolved conflict in our relationships. Let me give us these few uh, gui guidance. The first step is to pray. Having recognized the problem, you need prayer. Do you know why? When the, we have issues with ourselves, hearts have been hardened. I remember when I used to keep malice. I've shared it with you before that I was a renowned malice keeper. I love it so much until God changed me. I, I remember sleeping on the same bed with a cousin for more than two years and we were not saying good morning, good morning. Until November 4, 1986, when my father died, and he greeted me, and I answered him. I know what I'm saying. You must pray. 
Because God needs to soften hearts, to calm emotion, to heal wounds, to bring understanding to both parties involved in reconciliation. Do meet my brother. Please go ahead of me and let him show me favor. He understood the fact and he prayed fervently. To pray is to change and to change things. You can change the heart of your brother whom you have offended or who has offended you. Number two is to be intentional to take the initiative. Whether you are wrong <laughs> or you are right, because you are a believer, you must initiate it. If you check, it is like a broken arm. If you are not intentional in seeking healing, you won't go to a doctor. It is when you are intentional, you are seeking restoration, healing, you go to the surgeon and we put a cast on it and the healing will come. Jacob knew that he had done wrong and he knew he had to make it right and he did need the needful. He did not grandstand. See, at this time, he had become so great. War. He had the capacity. He said, who born them? They said he's coming with 400 men. Yes, I have money. I will get mercenaries. And we will fight to finish. He did not grandstand. He did not justify his action. Saying, well, after all, I'm not the one. It's my mom. It's her mother who said I should do it. But he approached the brother in humility. That is another step. To seek for reconciliation, we must embrace humble disposition and be ready to bury the... He said, do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourselves. It is humility that we soften the heart of the offended party and create an environment conducive to reconciliation. Another is restitution. I don't want to really talk about this. Uh, in some other denomination, they talk about restitution, uh, that you have to return what you have taken. We can see that in Jacob's approach, he sent gifts when we are ahead. Uh, there is a saying when we are joking amongst ourselves. We say every Esau must be settled. Every Esau must be settled. So you, whatever you have done wrong, be ready to carry out restitution. Be it in word, action, uh, see, let me whisper this. I know she won't like it. Uh, she doesn't like me referring to it or using her as illustration. You know, I was, <laughs> I was stubborn. It affected me a lot when I was in school. If I failed to submit assignment and they said, go and beg the lecturer, I wouldn't beg. We meet in the exam hall and we die there. I was cocky. I imported that into my marital relationship. I want her to say sorry. But one day, I was in my office. And the Holy Spirit whispered to me, you can't see yourself. That woman loves you. Just say sorry. You know what she did? You know, normally she will come with my breakfast to the office. Not as the provost. And the Holy Spirit has warned me. And so when she was about stepping out of my office, and I say, ah, Polake, I'm sorry. And she looked at me, eh? So you can say sorry. <laughs> That's a form of restitution. I owed her many sorries. And so I gave her the sorry on that day. 
I want us to look at the response of Esau. When Jacob approached him for reconciliation, he too opened up. He saw him, he ran to him. That is forgiveness coming from a genuine heart. When I address people preparing for marriage, there is a topic in my syllabus, conflict management in marriage. I talk about knowing that your partner is not a saint. Even saint to be is not a saint. If you read Isaiah chapter 6 very well, you know even the angels, they are not saints. They still cover their faces, they cover their feet to appear before God. Sin that they are not worthy to appear before God. So when your partner or your brother has done something wrong, don't say, oh dear, nukato Be open. To reconciliation. He welcomed his brother. Mutual forgiveness is another thing. In any unresolved conflict, you have done something or you have left something undone. You must confess what you have left undone and you must confess what you have done. And both of you must be ready to forgive. Get rid of Ephesians chapter 4. 31 to 32 says, Get rid of all bitterness, rage and anger, brawling and slander, along with every form of malice. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ, God forgave you. Dearly beloved, how is your interpersonal relationship? Who has offended you? Who have you offended? Seek reconciliation today. Don't try it. Don't contemplate it. That is what the Lord is whispering to me. Your brother has done something wrong and you have vowed not to have anything to do with him. Have a rethink. That your business partner who has robbed you. As a result of this message, please approach him. Let him know. Let the burden of guilt be on him. The psalmist says in Psalm 133, how good and pleasant it is when God's people live together in unity. It is like precious oil poured on the head, running down on the beard, running down on Aaron's beard, on the collar of his robe. It is as if the dew of Ammon were falling on Mount Zion. For them. I want to pray for us today. Nothing we hinder our blessings. In the name of God, the Father, God, the Son, and God, the Holy Spirit. Amen.